Right, now we're on the home stretch, and this is final layouts. This is basically creating your map, your final map with your uh, the map you've created, your legend, um, scale bar, north arrow, any text that you want to give to your um, to describe what the map is, any copyright information if you've either purchased or used one of the free download mapping services, uh, you do need proper um, to give proper kind of credit to the copyright source. Uh, if you anyone wants to read through Google Maps's uh, terms of use, um, if you give that a good read, you'll you'll realize it's not a good idea using uh, their data as base maps because they do not like it. Um, but anyway, let's get on. So back into GIS, this is our, this is our final map as we're going to show it. What you need to do is go to project and layout manager, and we're going to create a new uh, layout. Uh, you can create kind of template layout, so you don't have to recreate a lot of this every time, uh, but I'm just gonna show you how to create a very simple one from scratch. So if we go create, we give it a name. <clears throat> and then this is our blank canvas. First thing we need to do is add a map. So here's a map. You should recognize it. It's the one we've just drawn. Um, we've got a series of new tools along the side here. Um, this one here is to move items, select and move items that you've placed down. And then this one here is to move the contents of the item. So this one here will move the actual map canvas we've just dropped, where this will move the contents within. You can then also zoom in using your mouse, press control to do a more kind of controlled zoom in and out. Again, we can move it to kind of get that as tight on the on the map as you want, or you can have like a further out, but as I only used a very limited uh, size base map, we're gonna uh, zoom in quite on that just to fill the screen and try and get rid of any white edges. So that's our map in place now. So obviously we have to, let's give it a name. So add item, we're gonna add a label. So let's pop this down here. And what is it? It's a phase one map of some park. I'll give it the proper name. It's not just some park. Um, oh, fog. You might be putting project numbers, map versions, all sorts of other things in uh, in there. You might want to put that it's British National Grid for the coordinate reference system. Um, these are things that you'd be making decisions on yourself. Um, let's add another label down here just to say Right. Borden survey um, 2020. That won't be the actual copyright statement that you need to use. If you buy a map somewhere off the map site, uh, in the terms of use, they will tell you what you need to reference on your maps to say, to kind of show that you've used data from there. If you use the downloaded free data from Borden survey, um, <clears throat> the, again, there's a copyright statement that you need to use for that. If you've just ripped data off the internet and pasting that into your maps, then I, I would I would seriously reconsider not releasing them out into the public domain. Um, but anyway, so next thing we might want to add is, let's say we need a legend. If you have a vec if you have a raster map in here, 
as soon as I let go of this button, it's going to go mental and create a lot of legend items. And it's basically one legend item for every single color in that uh, raster map. And there we go. There's a lot of them. So we want to get rid of the, some of these legend items. For one, they're not in the map. And two, some of them, there's just too much data. So it's item properties. So you need to be selecting, you need to select the actual legend, but if you've just made it, it should still be selected. Also, you can see which map it's, uh, it's actually related to. If you've got multiple maps on a, on a, on a final layout, um, you need to kind of define which, which map it's actually related to. Um, also give it a name, legend, um, so we're going to remove some of these, so we'll take off auto update, nothing in group one is used, nothing in shapes used, nothing there, line habitats are used, point habitats are used, habitats copy is used, that's also used, and then down at the bottom we've got our raster layers which are not used. So that's all of the actual items we have on this map. We might want to play around with the order, so let's put site boundary on the top, bring that up to the top. The next one we may want to use is the actual area habitats. If, if you're using um, symbology that uh, categorizes multiple different um, features within the same layer, they'll always be grouped like this. Um, you can right click on here and click on hidden and it will get rid of that habitats grouping so it just goes from the first legend I entry into the next one without having those groups sometimes if it's more specific like what we're going to do for the bats here we may want that uh, subgroup heading to actually remain um, we're happy with we're not happy with the name line habitats so that was a hedgerow. That was a hedgerow. These are scattered trees. So I'm just double clicking on that. You can right click. I oh, know you can't right click and rename. Sorry, double click on that. There's probably a button here to rename. What's the. Yeah, double click on it. Um, scattered trees. And then for this, again, double click on that. Um, battery's potential. And then that's high and that's low. Um, that's all done for the legend now. So what else might we want to include? Uh, we may want to add a scale bar. So let's add a scale bar as well. That's that's uh, fair enough, that one in itself. Uh, you can play around with the style if you want. You can change the values. Say if you didn't want it as 50 meter increments, you could use 25 meters instead. Um, and then move that up to four. So got 25 meter increments on there now um, you may want a north arrow so we'll add a north arrow in as well there we go there's not an option here to drop down to change the different styles you have to actually go hunting for them um, usually when you click that for the first time it won't open the folder that they're stored in. It'll just open a random location. So if you are using 3.10, just follow this file path. See uh, program files, QGIS 3.1, apps, QGIS, LTR, SVG, and arrows. There are also a whole load of websites online where you could download SVG files 
that creates different symbols for formatting maps. Uh, there's hundreds available out there. So don't feel like you're constrained with just what's in within the program now. Let's just make this a little bit smaller. This is not the most professional kind of layout, but I'm just doing this an example. Um, not really. This isn't a map that I would uh, send over. Um, last thing we might want to add is a, a picture for your company logo. So let's stick that in there as well here. So we need to find where that's located. Should have one somewhere here. There we go. Oh, no, that's not actually our company logo. That's our uh, company beer label. <laughs> that's uh, Tyler Grange Ale. But let's just keep that in anyway. Um, there we go. So... I mean, hopefully that gives you a gist of how to actually create your layout. There's a whole load of other items that you can add in. Um, again, that, that's the basic ones that I think you would need to use. Play around with the others if you want. They all come with all sorts of various options to tweak the styling of them. Things like draw a box around. Yeah, draw a frame around your map, so it's got a black frame around it. Um, change the type of frame, change the type of edges. Um, all sorts of options. There's a million and one different ways to format these things. Um, so that's now your layout. So we'll save that layout. Probably the very last thing that you're going to do with a map, because this is all good and fine being digital and on your computer, is uh, export it in a way that you could actually use in a report or to send over to a client just as it is if they're just looking for a map from you. So what we need to do is... Um, Oh, where is it now? Export. So we've got three different options here. We can export the save as template there, which will probably be useful for you once you create a layout that you're happy with. Save it as template. So when you go to load a layout earlier, when, before we created this, you'd be able to find your template and then load it up from there so you wouldn't have to add all of these. They'd already be in place and you just need to tweak them slightly to save you some time. So we can export as, a, as an image. So let's just do that on our desktop. Phase one, I'll just leave the name as it is. We'll save that there. Gives you a choice of the resolution and size. Um, and save that. That's done. And we could also export it as a PDF as well. So we may as well do that just for completion sake. Again, various options in here. Let's just save. So then let's open our desktop up. Got our phase one map as an image. There we go. Lovely. And then close this, or we have got, give me the desktop, got the phase one as a PDF. So I think that's it. I think that's wrapped everything up now. Hopefully by following this, you'd be able to produce um, not just a simple phase one map, I'd say you'd be able to produce quite a complicated phase one map um, with all the uh, stages and steps that we've been through. Um, I really do hope you all find this useful. Uh, based on the number of people that have shown an interest, I'm sure, I'm sure it will be useful to a lot of you. Please, please do give me feedback on this. If you see anything I've done during any of these videos that you think there's a better way of doing it, I would love to hear from you to tell me. Or even if you just want to give some general feedback or thanks or criticism or whatever, just let me know. Um, yeah, thank you all and goodbye.